In this video, we examine the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. We're about to start the hike from Jericho to Jerusalem. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Starting east of the Jordan River, let's follow the road from Jericho to Jerusalem on map 19. The road brings us through the different districts of Jericho, including the residential area and municipal Jericho. Passing through municipal Jericho, the road begins climbing up the ascent of Adamim, a ridge on the south side of the deep Wadi Kilt Canyon. Continuing through the rocky Judean wilderness, the road descends into a canyon called Nahal Og, which acts like a moat guarding Jerusalem's eastern approach. The road climbs up another ridge, then over the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem. This cross-section diagram shows the different segments of the route that travels from Jericho to Jerusalem. This is the route that Jesus took on his last journey up to Jerusalem. Note on the lower right hand side of the screen, Jericho sits at 800 feet or 250 meters below sea level. Jesus would have passed through the different districts of Jericho. First the residential area and then about one and a half miles away was municipal Jericho built by the Hasmoneans and Herod the Great. From municipal Jericho the route climbs on a ridge called the Ascent of Adumim or the Red Ascent to a ridge crest where Roman and Crusader period forts guarded the road. From the forts, the road descends into a canyon called Nahal Og and then continues up toward Jerusalem on a ridge where parts of the Roman road can still be seen today. It reaches the eastern shoulder of the Mount of Olives and then climbs over the top of the mountain. Finally, the road descends down into the Kidron Valley before ascending into the city of Jerusalem. The straight line distance between Jerusalem and Jericho is 14 miles or 22 kilometers, but there is an elevation difference of 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters. We start our journey back down near Jericho's strongest freshwater spring, which is covered by the long red roofed building. Next to the spring sit the ruins of Old Testament period Jericho, conquered by Joshua. Ruins of the conquered Canaanite city have been exposed by modern archaeological excavation. From here we continue south or west to Herodian Municipal Jericho. This view from the south of the Jericho region shows the different districts of Jericho. Residential Jericho, including the main freshwater spring at the foot of the Old Testament period ruins. But also Municipal Jericho, built in the decades before Jesus by the Hasmoneans and Herodians. Residential Jericho was separated from Herodian Municipal Jericho by about one and a half miles or two kilometers. Knowing the district breakdown of ancient Jericho helps explain an apparent contradiction in the Gospels regarding the location of the healing of the blind man Bartimaeus. Matthew and Mark state that Jesus met Bartimaeus as Jesus was going out from Jericho, describing the healing from the perspective of residential Jericho. On the other hand, Luke describes the healing from the perspective of municipal Jericho, saying that Jesus was approaching Jericho. The healing would have taken place on a road between the Jericho districts. What at first glance looks like a contradiction between the Gospels is actually a careful recording of different eyewitness perspectives. After passing through Herodian municipal Jericho, the ruins are seen here, the road begins climbing the ascent of Adamim the ridge on the south side of Wadi Kilt. At the beginning of the ascent, the road was guarded by Kipros, a fortress built by Herod the Great, situated on a high cone-shaped hill. Herod named the fortress in honor of his mother. Like the modern road seen here, the ancient road stayed on the ridge, avoiding the deep canyons of the Judean desert. The road from Jericho to Jerusalem comes through the rough terrain of the Judean desert. The Judean desert sits in the rain shadow of the hill country of Judah. Rain and vegetation disappear the further one descends east toward the Jordan Valley. The Judean desert is sparsely populated. Water, accessible only with difficulty, is from springs deep in the canyons. Mainly three types of peoples live here. The refugee or fugitive like David who fled from Saul, or the monks who built this monastery. Secondly, policemen or soldiers guarding the roads, but mainly the semi-nomadic shepherd with flocks of sheep and goats. The ascent of Adumim, or the red ascent, gets its name from the reddish color of some of the limestone along the route. Another suggestion is that the name comes from the amount of blood that has been shed on the route. 
We note here an example of the geographical detail and accuracy of the scriptures. The book of Joshua, chapter 15, verse 7, says that the border between the tribal allotments of Judah and Benjamin goes along the ascent of Adumim, which is south of the valley, meaning south of the Wadi Kilt. Benjamin's allotment is to the north, Judah is to the south. A little less than halfway between Jericho and Jerusalem, the Adumim Ridge ends at a crest. Here, a series of ancient forts strategically guarded the road. At the Adumim Ridge Crest, the path of the ancient road joins the modern highway for a couple miles. The red-roofed building is a reconstructed Turkish inn, which today is a museum for Samaritan artifacts. The Good Samaritan helped the man along the Jerusalem to Jericho route. Beyond the Adumim Ridge Crest, the road must descend into the Og Canyon. In the distant horizon, beyond the Og Depression, towers on the Mount of Olives are visible. Here the modern highway starts its way up out of the Og Canyon. In addition to the steep descent and barrenness of the entire Judean desert, the depth of the Og Canyon makes direct approach to Jerusalem very difficult. The Israelite prophets of Jerusalem, like Isaiah, were familiar with this desert terrain. Winter rains cause grass and flowers, like peoples and nations, to temporarily flourish. We're in the Judean wilderness, east of Jerusalem. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Isaiah also says to prepare for the coming of the Lord, like preparing a road for a king coming through the desert. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The modern highway continues the climb out of the Og Canyon. Vegetation and human settlement now appear. The three towers on the Mount of Olives are visible. Like all travelers from Jericho, we keep an eye on the Mount of Olives, knowing that Jerusalem is just on the other side. The Roman road did not ascend from the Og Canyon where the modern road does. Cuttings and remnants of the Roman road can be seen on this ridge. The Mount of Olives is on the horizon to the west. We're standing on a section of the Roman road that went from Jerusalem higher up in the hills through the Judean desert to Jericho. This is the road where the Good Samaritan helped a man who had fallen among thieves. Now we have arrived at the eastern shoulder of the Mount of Olives. Here is relatively flatter ground with human settlement and where roads maneuver more freely. Note the modern roads that travel along the shoulder from north to south. One of the main biblical towns on the shoulder was Bahurim, whose ruins might be on this hill. Another possibility is that Bahurim was located where this modern town is, since it sits exactly where the road from Jericho reaches the shoulder. As seen on map 5-5, when David fled Jerusalem during Absalom's revolt, he came over the Mount of Olives and passed by Bahurim. At Bahurim, a Benjamite named Shimei came out and cursed David. Also, two spies that David left behind departed from Jerusalem and hid in a cistern in Bahurim before joining David further east near the Jordan River. David then forded the Jordan River and made his way into Gilead. From Bahurim, one could take the steep ascent straight over the Mount of Olives. However, a route to Jerusalem's city of David ascended the Mount of Olives slightly to the south. Jesus was on this route, as in his days it led to the town of Bethany, the home of Lazarus. Bethany and another town, Bethphagi, sit on the southeastern slope of the Mount of Olives. Marked on map 9-8 are a couple of occasions when Jesus traveled on the Jericho to Jerusalem route. Following an episode at Hanukkah in Jerusalem, Jesus spent time in the district of Perea, beyond the Jordan. After hearing about the sickness of Lazarus, he stayed two days longer and then climbed the Jericho to Jerusalem road to Bethany, where he raised Lazarus from the dead. Several weeks later, Jesus made his last journey to Jerusalem. He traveled south in the Jordan Rift Valley and came to Jericho, where he healed the blind man Bartimaeus and then met the tax collector Zacchaeus in municipal Jericho. Then he climbed up the Jericho to Jerusalem road, again to Bethany, where he had a supper in the home of Simon the leper. Later, Jesus rode a donkey from Bethphagi over the summit of the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem. From Bethany and Bethphagi, we now climb to the summit of the Mount of Olives. It was from Bethphagi that Jesus rode on a donkey as the designated king, the son of David, into his city, Jerusalem. 
At the fork in the modern road, Jesus would have followed the path to the left. The long journey from Jericho is coming to an end. A healthy person could walk the Jericho-Jerusalem road in eight to nine hours. At the summit of the Mount of Olives, Jerusalem and the Temple Mount come into view. Finally, the road goes down into and then up out of the Kidron Valley, which separates Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. We're just uh, on our way to Jerusalem and uh, taking a little break right now. I think we're about to go on the, see some parts of the Roman road and Mount of Olives. More or less, man, Jesus did some work to come to die. Well, for the last nine hours, we've been trekking. We started Jericho, up the scent of Adam Meme. <laughs> we hitched up with the Roman road and we finally made it to the city walls of Jerusalem. Woo!